You're listening to the Surgeons of Horror podcast, Alien 3, Part 2. She's like, okay, shit's going down. It doesn't normally happen until I arrive. To her mind, it's like, it's here. Yeah. Well, it, something's like, so she's got to try and find out evidence once and for, once and for all. Yeah. And that's, that's when she goes to find Bishop. Is that right? Yeah, she does. But I just want to, before that bit, the one thing I did want to notice is that Clemens at this point is proving to be a bit of a smart cookie because mm. he's the one that notices the hole and he notices that it's burnt. Like he, yes. he thinks yeah, yeah. something more to it. He, yeah. so he Do you notices, expect from a doctor? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so yeah. and I'm making a point of that because of what mm. happens like almost next <laughs> uh, yeah. sort of makes his character a bit of a throwaway moment, which was disappointing. Yeah. So, but we'll come to that. Okay, so yeah, to come to your point, yes. Yeah, so, so this is where then Ripley goes on a bit of a an errand. She goes down to the wreck to find the wreckage of the EEV. Uh, she gets the flight recorder, and she basically finds what's left of uh, Bishop and mm. puts him up. I like the effects of this. What's your? Thought? I like the idea of it. I like the idea of using him as a talking voice recorder. Yeah, like she's, yeah, she's um, yeah, because back then it was still. The science of that sort of shit. Yeah. Um, this is long before you could throw your, your iPhone onto your television screen before you can use multiple different technology to talk to each other. Yeah. So this is like, oh, this is kind of cool. This is kind of clever. Yeah. So she's grabbing it. Because at the time, you don't know what she's doing. She's grabbed the box. She's grabbed him. She gets cornered by four dudes, of course. Oh, yeah. You kind of, hands first. This yeah. bit was going to happen. She's going to get raped. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's about to happen. And then Dylan comes in and, and just is... Dutton, sorry, yeah, Dylan comes in and he's just very disappointed. He's very disappointed. <laughs> That's and, one and, he's felt like yeah. and he expresses this with a crowbar to their heads. And um and then and then just, you know, is screaming at them. And they all straight away go, they uh, get a flux. They 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 they, they throw themselves on their knees and beg for forgiveness. Yeah. So it is that interesting thing of the dynamic that they have. It's not so much, you know, it's not one guy against four. And, they, and, then, and then they're, and they're super aggressive and horny. They they they've had a moment of weakness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Straight away realize, oh, they're wrong, they're wrong, and he's furious with them. Ripley punches one because she yeah. has to have the Ripley moment. Yep. Um, and then yeah, he tells her to fuck off. He's got to deal with these boys. And mm-hmm. so in the uncut, in the extended version, he literally cuts he cuts their balls off. I made oh, that up. Oh shit! I didn't know that. <laughs> oh shit! Nah, nah, that's bullshit. Um, <laughs> Up, uh, yeah, I made that. I made that up. So, uh, so yeah. So she takes Bishop back to uh, Dutton's surgery and yeah. hooks him up with the flight recorder. This is really cool. And did you think when you saw Bishop's face because it's half ripped open and it's clearly a, a animatronic dummy? Yeah. Um, <laughs> he expected it to say Quaid, Quaid, <laughs> <laughs> with his eyes. <laughs> um, yeah. So, uh, and then, yeah, she, she hooks it up and just it talks to the flight recorder and it reveals, uh, she says, was there an alien on board? And he said, yes. Yeah, so suspicions are confirmed. So, um, and he says it came down with us. Is that what he says? It or? came down with us, that's right. I was, that's yeah. what I was yeah. just trying to, trying to remember, yes. Um, yes, and so she knows that has, well, her suspicions are confirmed in the process mm. of that. While that's happening, we get the whole Boggs, Reigns, and Golic scene uh, as they're doing some kind of duty somewhere. There's it's this, that shot with all the candles kind of lit up along the yeah uh, yeah the cabin. And there. my first thought is like, oh my god, this is so seven, it's so <laughs> yeah. so brown, very dark, yeah, different hues yeah. of brown and yes. leaky and candles and that sort of yeah. It's so this is a precursor visually to what he likes, and he will take it to seven basically. So yeah, that was my yeah. thought. Back then, I didn't think that obviously, but yeah, it's a very, for want of a better word, it's a very '90s look. From that point of view, it was kind of cool. That the first three films were first '70s, second was '80s, third one was '90s. That was yes. kind of cool. And they each do embrace the look, or some aspect of the look of those various decades. I feel visually. Yeah. So I don't think that was kind of cool, looking back at this video. At this yeah, time. yeah. Um, that's right. So. Uh, so that's kind of happening, but we also at the same time, there's a few things that happen at once here. So then while that setup is happening, we also have 
uh, Andrew's basically kind of having a go at Clemens for letting Ripley wander around. Um, and he basically also says that he's received communication from Wayland Jutani regarding Ripley and that she needs to be isolated, uh, essentially. Uh, they yes. Have yes, that's right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, so but they've somehow figured out she's been infected, right? Or they? That's no, what I got. I don't think so. I think they just. I don't know. Who knows? Oh, maybe because if they've had the, if they, oh yes, they do because they rec- they would have received the same information. Oh. Yeah. Has, yeah, they would have the same. Uh, yeah, the black box information. That, they know that yeah. the alien is some. Not necessarily that she's the one infected, but they know that there is life form was there somewhere, right? So yeah. they're coming there for them and they want Ripley isolated, right? So they, he's received those instructions. Oh yeah, so that, yeah, the bit goes back to the bit with the candles uh, downstairs and we uh, have a bit where one of them uh, thinks somebody's playing a prank on them because one of the candles goes out. So uh, I think it's Reigns goes to investigate and that's where he, find, he comes across like a fully grown xenomorph uh, which mm. grabs him and starts biting him and then Boggs and Golic kind of hear the screaming, they go to investigate and they see <laughs> basically uh, the Xenomorph kind of attacking Rain- the Reigns character. Uh, mm. They try to back away um, and come full circle to get out, but they kind of end up finding, they kind of, it, it seems like there's only one one way out. So they have to try and go around and back through, but they come across Reigns' dead body. And at mm. that point, Bo- Boggs is then suddenly attacked from, above and ripped up through uh into the ceiling and all the blood his blood sprays down on Golic, who kind of yeah. stays stuck to the spot in awe is uh, apparently of what he's seen he kind of is fascinated with this creature he's seen and he he then associates it as a dragon he keeps talking about it yeah as a dragon. so his fragile mental state is gone now yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was a dragon and i think that that was a bit that that caused ripley to go shit okay i need to find yeah. bishop Maybe. I think if I'm getting my orders mixed up, but, um, uh, no, but yeah, this bit happens before. I think that happens before that. Then we get this bit. So okay. like that's okay, right, right. kind of inter- intercut around each other. But I think yeah, we get the pre- we get the premise of it just before she goes off to investigate. Mm. She investigates and then finds out there's an alien and then a, a xenomorph and then um, then we get the scene where the xenomorph attacks. Yeah, the, the, the prison inmates, right? So, so Ripley then goes to Andrews. Oh, she has to tell. She has to tell them now. She goes yeah, up. She's yeah, got to tell them that. So she. Yeah, uh, this bit isn't shown in the cut we saw, but apparently there's a shot where Golic comes back to the mess hall and he's covered in blood, but he's just eating and smiling a bit manically. Right. Um, and then um, the other inmates return with Dylan. And they basically restrain Golic because they think he's the one that's... He's done it. He's done it, yeah. yeah. So he gets pulled mm. off. So, um, and this is where the, 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 she also... Uh, Ripley also finds out about that the company knows um, all the information as well. And that uh, uh, Bishop is beyond repair and he kind of basically says, I don't want... To kill me, you. yeah. yeah I want you to kill me. So yeah. she... Oh, power surges him or something to kind of wipe him out. Um, and she does see equivalent of ejecting a drive from a Mac drive without first putting it in the yeah. trash. Yeah, it, yes. it just it just fucks him. She just yanks the thing out. Yeah, that's it. Uh, <clears throat> Golic is kind of going on about. He gets taken to the infirmary. He's ranting and raving about the, this dragon. That's right. That tie him down to a bed. Yeah, and Ripley. Ripley's there, isn't she? Overhearing this or something? Well, this is. I think at this point she's told Andrew, "Look, there's a, there's an alien. I yeah. don't believe her." She goes, "Well, you need to hunt. We need to hunt her down and kill it." He goes, "Well, there's yeah. no weapons here." So that's the big. That was the big oh, thing. That's, that's right. right. Yeah. The original yeah. pitch as to why it was set on a monastery made purely of wood in space yes. was you couldn't use flamethrowers because it would set the whole place on fire. Mm. That was fucking pitch I've ever heard for a science fiction film. Ever, yeah, um, yeah, I love yeah it. but that's the reason. But, so they had to sort of they had, that's why Fin they, they wanted Finch to really like the idea that they didn't have weapons, that yes, they didn't have guns. Right. Like, like the, in the last thing, film, the big thing here is also that Dylan defends uh Golic here as well. He's like, he might be a fool, but he's not a liar. I believe him, I believe this, yeah. So he's already buying into the potential, Ripley's, threat yeah, and Ripley's, yeah. Whereas so, again, in terms of allies, she yeah. has him, she has Dutton. 
Yeah. Uh, she has Charles Dance's character. Yes. Um, so she's got two powerful allies. Yeah. But then... Again, <laughs> Andrews goes for a walk. He goes off. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, yeah. And Kate keeps telling them that they need to be confined to the infirmary. Ripley and then Clemens have their deep and meaningful moment of chatting. Because he reveal, he reveals to her what he did, right? Yeah, and you're like, oh, why are you doing that? You're going to die now, aren't you? You, don't, uh, you fucking keep your mouth shut, bro. <laughs> uh, uh, you can see that it's like he's like, do you want to tell us your character motivation? He's just going, nope, nope, I'm good, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> yeah, I'm the filmmakers that. are going... You sure you don't want it? Because he, he, no, 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 I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> no, I don't want to die. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, like, he basically says yes. He was an inmate here, um, and basically the reason he was there is because he uh, was a, he's an alcoholic, and mm. during one of his states um, and his alcohol binges, he accidentally uh, prescribed the wrong dosage of morphine, uh, killing a few people. We don't. It doesn't specify how many, but it's, it, there's a few. Um, in the process, so and, yeah, and that resonates with modern day, current day thing. Like doctors, a lot of doctors are super overworked, and it's a miracle yeah. they don't kill more patients than they actually do. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah because you, you believe it. It's a thing that the doctors work exhausted. They, yeah. they really That's do. That's right. That's right. Uh, so he ended up staying there. So and then uh, when the prison was kind of disbanded, uh, he had the option because he'd served his. You know, his time his time he had the option to leave but he chose to stay uh because no one would ever take him because of his his history and yet there he could be he could do useful. what he needed to do yeah he could be useful yeah um yeah so he has this kind of whole moment and uh, and, the, and the filmmakers go thank you now we can kill you and, now we can kill and this is where it like, like, <laughs> pops up out behind the yeah. shower curtain um, yeah, with a, with a <laughs> it's got, a, it's got a towel around. Its, <laughs> it's got a towel around its waist, yeah. and it has uh, like those little hair thing nets. And going, oh, I'm really sorry. Yeah. And he goes, yeah. the jacuzzi is brilliant, by the way. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, um, and he's like, oh, I'm so embarrassed. And then the other <laughs> goes, can I kill you? Oh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna have to kill someone now, dude. I'm so yeah. embarrassed. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll choose you because you've just told us your life is. Just you should have said that, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, mate. Those are the rules. So yeah, yeah. So he basically uh, we don't. It's very quick cut, but he basically just does the whole kind of uh, you know the ejecting the inner mouth jaw thing into Clemens' head. Yeah, killing him straight away. Well, uh, he's very smart, so the brains are tasty spit. Mm, damn, mm, brains. Um, of course, then it does this big graphic track into to Golic. He's like, ah, he's going. Yeah, it's, he's kind of like, oh, I told you so. He didn't say doesn't say that, but he's like, mm. ah, it's a thing. And then yeah. Basically, Ripley's like, fuck, she backs herself into a corner. The yeah. Annie walks up to her. And I remember thinking, oh, my God, the way they, this is CGI. It looks so smooth, so photorealistic. Now you look at you think, oh, my God, that's so bad. It's so under, <laughs> un, under-rendered. It looks like a bad video game. It's, it's this weird thing with CGI throughout the years. It's like it looks amazing, and then within a few years, your eyes get used to it. And you think, no, that's really fake. Um, the, uh, the interesting yeah. thing here, though, like if you were to say – What's the one shot that you remember from Alien 3? Mm. Possibly is this point where the alien comes up and examines. Yeah. When it goes into close-up, that's the real thing. That's the yeah. actual animatronic puppet. But that's the, probably the bit that you kind of remember. Like, it's in, I'm pretty sure it's in the, well, it's definitely in the trailer. Yeah, it's in the trailer. It's in the poster works. Yeah, yeah. it's the, the shot because she's, yeah. it's the other kind of thing. It's now face-to-face with her. Yeah. And, and basically, if you, it's effectively sniffs her out. Um, yeah, yeah, it's like that. Like, 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 we'll leave her alone. I'll leave you for later. Uh, yeah. And you're kind of like, oh, that's interesting what's going on there. Um, and it basically well, then grabs Clemens' body, apparently. I, I always, yeah. this is the bit I do want to, I am going to chat on this on a sec, but yeah. I always wondered who it was that he ripped up with him into the roof because we never see Golic again, right, in the film. Yeah, the film. right, yeah, yeah, true, yeah. So I always was like... Um, Thinking, I thought, was that was that Golic that you ripped up with it? Because we don't we don't really see. But I always have this thing at the end. I mean, it is explained in another cut, which I'm going to get to. Um, but if we go off the cut, the, the theatrical release, I always have this vision of like right at the very end when everyone's fucked off the planet, mm. but to Golic still sitting in an infirmary, going, uh, guys. Um, <laughs> where's the dragon? Um, <laughs> Hello. Because <laughs> <laughs> the, the end shot has the one survivor. What's his face? Yeah. Um, 
I um, his name Webb. Oh, that, that, that's the actor's name. But yeah, yeah, yeah Morse. Is it Morse? That's it, Morse. Morse, Inspector Morse. It's weird. Um, but he literally, yeah. as he's been let out, he looks looks around at the place. Yeah. And they go, and they shove him up, and he's like, yeah. But now you can see he's thinking, don't I forget anybody? Yeah, it's like, wait a minute. Oh, that bastard. Ah, that's fine. <laughs> and it cast a cast of garlic going, hello. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> How do I get off this planet now, eh? Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just to start with, man. I think there's, I think there's avenue there for a spin-off. Uh, oops, yeah, there is. My mic. <laughs> okay. So anyway, but we see Clemens get ripped out um, up into the floor, uh, into the ceiling, I should say. And uh, this is where Ripley then does a mad run to go and warn the others. Uh, yes. And this is cut with um, Andrews doing a whole his whole big speech um, that it's carelessness that's led to this, that there's two people missing, presumed killed by Golic. Uh, and Dylan's kind of sitting there a bit like, yeah, what the fuck? Um, and, and, and she's yelling. And he's like, don't listen to her. She's fucking, yeah. Yeah, mom. so, so she, uh, Ripley turns up and says, like, you know, comes in, warns them that the alien's here. Andrews tries to silence her uh, and orders her to be dragged back to the infirmary, at which point she's, he suddenly, <laughs> the xenomorph pops through the ceiling, yeah. and pulls him up through the, the ceiling, yeah. dragging him off uh, in front of all the prisoners. Um, my internet, my um, lecture yeah. when I first saw this years ago, when we yeah. analyzed my lecture in my tutorial group, analyzed it at university yeah. the next day. She said, Hands up here, who was sick and tired of seeing people being pulled up to the roof? And I was like, Oh, good point. Yeah, a lot of people do get pulled up to the roof. Do they? At that yeah, time? They get, attacked, they, get, they get attacked from above. It's death from above from the thing. And she was like, And then her big thing was like, because she didn't like the film at all, but she was like, they were, and the thing is, because the cut is so condensed, you don't get those moments where you see Golic come in covered in blood and eating food. No, you don't no. connect with these people. No. So it, it, and they all look the same in the way they They all do look the same. They, that's a bit that does get confusing because they are, yeah. like, all have their head shaved. They are a bit, yeah. all right, which one like there? And I remember yeah, like going, like, in my head, I was going, right, there's 25 of them. And I was counting down, like, right. Right. <laughs> to find out what but yeah, it, for me, it was very samey, and the deaths were getting meaningless to know because well, there were similar well, okay. deaths. From, from I, I just, above, I yeah. just want to pick up on your death from above thing. So where else have yeah. we seen that? That was from the first two guys. Uh, uh, oh, in uh, the uh, uh, Murphy Boggs, right? Those yeah, guys. Um, yeah, Dance wasn't though. I thought Charles Dance died that way, but yeah, it's yeah, a lot yeah. of it's, and the later one that's how it sort of picks off people. Yeah, when they try to trap it. Um, yeah, so it's a bit yeah. more, uh, it's a bit more of a ceiling crawler than a. Yeah, interesting. All right, cool. Yeah, that's, just, that's a good point. Thanks for raising that. Mm. Uh, I hadn't really thought about it, so that's why I was. Pretty... I forgot my lecturer's name. I should credit her, but anyway. <laughs> yeah, but, it, 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 but to me, to me, the whole thing I took away from it was that yeah. aliens had eleven guys, and that, and you kind of got a sense who was dying. Yeah. not really, yeah. but. Um, and obviously, Alien had only had seven people, but yeah, he was like, I don't particularly care about these guys, mm. and they're all starting to fall morphing and they die one after the other. So for me, the whole stakes of caring for just having a, a stake in the, the outcome of these people, yeah. they were ignoring that rule straight off the bat because they're yeah. not sympathetic characters, they're not empathetic characters, they're whinging characters. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Um, so, all right, so yeah, straight away. Uh, so I think the big thing here, though, is that they had to get rid of the Andrews character because he's he's the one organising everything, right? So yeah, he's the boss. Yeah, yeah. So by getting rid of him, there's no longer any uh, sense of authority. Yes. Um, and Dylan almost like reluctantly doesn't want it. Like he's like, I don't want that responsibility. He's you know he wants them. Even though he's clearly an alpha, he's like, he's like, I don't want. It. And he's the one that even suggests Ripley, I believe. Because he, he, there's a question he says. He says, I think he says, um, you, "Were you an officer? What was your position?" Um, so he's almost kind of wanting to pass the baton on to her. But I, there's that conflict though, because um, the Aaron character, the Andrew's assistant, eighty-five, is still there, and he's trying to mm. take on the respons- responsibility of leader. But nobody, <laughs> nobody wants him to be that person. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, so there's also- thing, was, can I also say something about uh, Ripley's rank? She was always yeah. a warrant officer on on the on the Nostromo. Yeah, and 
that's a commission officer rank. Um, it's sort of that bridging commissioning officer. It's sort of a living pad if you want to be an officer. Yes. But it's a bit like how a master sergeant in the army is quite highly respected, even though the lowest rank in the army, which is second lieutenant, technically outranks a sergeant. Right. But she was always an enlisted to me, an enlisted person. And so her rank finished when she effectively got fired at the beginning of AVNs. Yes. Suddenly she comes back as a full lieutenant. So I don't know where the hell that came from because she was always a consultant. <laughs> Was never, she never joined the company again. She was a she was a dock worker who was a consultant aboard the ship. So she had never had any ranks. I don't know where this Lieutenant Ripley thing yeah, came from. Yeah, that's a good at all. That always confused the hell out of me. Anyway, yeah, that shit bothers me. You know me. Yeah, no, no, yeah. It's it's a good point. It's it's mm. a well raised point that warrants further investigation, but maybe not here. The yeah. uh, <laughs> uh, so this is where Ripley also kind of mentions about how she knows what this thing is and um, the only thing she knows that it's afraid of is fire. Um, and yes. the absence of weapons, um, they have to kind of think about what they're going to do and how they can kill her. Um, mm -hmm. Morse, again, like he's the one that's kind of pissed off, he's the pissed off one. And he basically blames Ripley for everything. Um, and, but Dylan kind of, kind of pulls them in still, uh, despite that. So then they look at an inspection of the floor plan. There's always blueprints. Uh, yeah. they kind Don't of realize sense. there's a large <laughs> system of tunnels and there happens to be this large toxic waste containment unit, uh, which has been sealed off. Um, and there's lots of highly combustible material left behind by the colony. Um, and they come up with a plan that they can use this to burn the alien by kind of luring it into the tunnels, essentially, uh, and, and you know, towards the containment unit and trapping it in there. Um, and do, 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 what happens there? They get the reveal of how 85 got his name because of his IQ from the mm -hmm. weight character. Um, Dylan notices that he's not well. Uh, at this point too, because she's kind of seeming to be like not very good, and uh, he's concerned yes. because obviously Clemens isn't there. Um, mm. But they continue anyway, regardless, and that's when uh, they are trying to set up. Um, but we have that, and they're mopping the floor of all this kind of combustible, yeah. fire, essentially. And we yes. have this kind of moment where you know the ship goes sour because one of the guys. Um, uh, he drops. Something. He gets pulled. He, he gets pulled yeah. up. That's it. He gets from above no, and he, he drops. Gets pulled up above again. But like, there's a bit where before that he drops something. I forget what it was, but he drops something and he's able to pick it up. Uh, yeah. And he's cl and there's a shot above him. You can just see the xenomorphs there. So you know he's going to get a attack. I guess from above again, which is what yeah. the lecturer was saying. Um, and so, yeah, he gets pulled up, at which point he drops one of his flares and it hits the ground and the whole it thing fuel. and blows up a whole load of shit, including a load of the prisoners. Way yes. to get rid of some of your extras. Yes. <laughs> you got to cut people down. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's basically how they kind of wipe out a lot of people. Yeah, at this point, because she's sick. Yeah, that's right. She is sick. Oh, they managed, like, somehow managed to kind of get away anyway. Yeah, all. they all get away. They yeah. regroup. And then, they've lost Dylan more numbers now. Them. That's right. And Dylan holds a sermon. Uh, mm. And uh, Ripley and Aaron are talking about what they need to do next. Aaron mentions that the company is here and they're coming and they're going to kill the alien. He also mentions um, that Rip they said that Ripley is a top priority. Um, mm. apparently, yeah, she's not to be top. Yeah, that's right. And apparently at this point, Golic is being guarded by Morse in the infirmary. Um, and this is, we don't see this bit again in the cut we saw. Right, okay. um, And so he, and uh, Golic uh, convinces Morse to let him out of his straitjacket uh, and mm. that he was innocent of killing Boggs and Reigns because he was innocent anyway, because they know this thing's there. Yeah, yeah. Because they know He kind of, in, oh, that's right. So Golic implies that he was going to free the alien. Um, and set it free because he's fascinated with this creature and then he knocks basically Morse out and he escapes. Um, then we come back to what we know of the of the story a little bit um, and Ripley's asking permission 
did they get did he get permission to kill the alien and he's kind of saying mm. yes but you kind of sense that he's not telling the truth um and that the rescue and that the request has been denied by uh, by the company uh, then we go back again to the Golic character who basically comes to the containment chamber and he basically tells this character called Arthur, who is played by Diobia Apare, who actually had a bit of a small role in the Game of Thrones, just to have another connection. And I only mention him because I, I've interviewed this guy. Um, oh, yeah. Um, for, uh, for a previous uh, job that I was doing. Um, yeah. And I had no, no idea he was in it. And that's because he's not in the version I saw. Um, so he, yeah, so he's the one standing guard. And then that's where apparently um, Arthur refuses. And then Golic attacks Arthur and kills him with a razor. Uh, uh-huh. in his throat. And then he, he basically enters the chamber where the, where the xenomorph is. And then, um, then we basically see uh, the shadow of the xenomorph closing in on him. And then we just basically then see the Xenomorph running out. So this is where Golic is killed in there. Right. Um, so he is dead, but we just don't see any of that stuff um, yeah. happen. What we when we pick up proper is then when Ripley confronts Dylan about um, the fact that she thinks the company are coming, but they're not here to kill the alien. Um, they want to keep it. Um, she's also uh, concerned. Um, with what the company will do to the prisoners when they get there. Um, mm. So Dylan basically says that he's fr- he and the other prisoners are outcasts anyway. So he's not really concerned about that. Um, at which point they're interrupted by Morse, who who mentions about how Arthur and Golic are dead. Um, mm. Then we cut back to the bit where they go down and they realise that 10 of the other... So they've counted the, de- the other inmates. Now that the tunnels are all clear, that they've worked out that there's 10 dead inmates. Mm-hmm. Um, and so like this is where they're confirming the numbers. And then we pick up with Ripley trying to do the uh, scan of her own body because this is where, because she realises she's sick and she thinks something. She's quite, yeah, she's quite sick, yeah. yeah. So we pick up the proper story here. So she's doing that and Aaron turns up and he's like, what's going on? Can I help? She gets him to basically help him run the EEV. Uh, sorry, the scanner on the EEV. Um, yeah. And that's when they discovered that she's carrying an embryo of an alien. So I remember the scene kind of, is like the hardware behind it was kind of cool. The technology yeah. was kind of cool. Yeah. She, she seemed to know how to work the system. So again, I always bring out the fact that from her point of view, she's 50 years out of date. She, she'd been asleep for a long time. Yeah. But she seems to have a real good grasp on the technology at the time. But at the same time, that doesn't mean like this future world, 50 years in the 20th century, technology progressed a lot. Doesn't mean that 50 years in this century doesn't progress as much. So there's a bit of that. But, that's true. That's true. Um, but like we are really, because she is on the, on the wreckage of the EEV from aliens. Yeah. So she would be a little bit more familiar with the technology. Like if she was trying to do it for, say, in uh, in the on the prison ship on the prison planet, then you'd be kind of probably I kind of get where you're coming from with that. But I guess but the alien the, the Sulaco was a a present te- te- technological ship. She hadn't. She was from the Nostromo era. I, so. I, I I understand, but she would have been on that ship for a bit, wouldn't she? Before they went. No, she was asleep. As soon as you're bored, you sleep, yeah. and she woke up at the beginning of the film. So she wouldn't have been on. From her point of view, she right. wouldn't be that familiar with it. But. But again, at the same time, you could counter that argument saying that technology just stayed, just didn't progress that much within those 50 years as it yeah, has yeah, yeah. True. in this century, which is, it has, the 20th century is a weird century as far as human evolution is concerned. Like, yeah. the 1900 is, like, light years different to the year 2000 hmm. compared to the year 1900 and 1800 and so on and so forth. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, um, but anyway, the thing that got me is like, how the hell did she get an egg inside her? Because again, there's the whole thing of like, did the face hugger attack her or Newt? Um, were the two face huggers? I was all confused about that. So yeah, yeah, like, yeah. They don't really explain that very well. Um, yeah. And but but I think the big thing from the the plot point of view though is that it's not just any embryo that's in there; it's a queen. So uh, basically, if it were to get out. Uh, it, it, the whole thing could start all over again. 
Yeah. So she realizes that her days are numbered, essentially. Um, Dylan uh, gathers the inmates together and basically kind of says, right, we need to do it. It kind of goes over stuff. This is what we need to do. There's no ducks, so um, it can only go through. The, the xenomorph can only go through the doors. Um, and they basically, they come up with essentially the same plan, but they want to just trap it in the, where the furnace is and drop the molten liquid on it. Molten liquid on it. Yeah, on it. Yeah. So, um, and they're going to use the yeah, Part of me thinks that. Part of me thinks that the first plan didn't work. What makes you think the second plan, which is yeah, essentially exactly. the same plan, yeah. is going to work? Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, exactly. So, but they, the idea is that they're going to use themselves as bait. Essentially, that's the idea. So, yeah. uh, and you're right. You kind of think this is a recipe for disaster, and it actually mm-hmm. does have to be that. Uh, <laughs> so uh, Ripley suspects that uh, the company knows about the embryo, and she basically um, gets Aaron to send a message to the company um, to say that the whole base has gone toxic and they should stay away. Um, uh, Aaron at this point still thinks that the company's going to come and rescue them and kill the creature um, but Ripley says look if the company comes um, they're only after the alien nothing else um, but he doesn't believe her story essentially and he won't yeah. back her up uh, which pisses her off um, and she goes out on a mission to find the creature, finds it, um, and tries to attack it. Um, which she at one point thinks she sees the alien head and hits it, but it's a, an old pipe. Uh, so this is this was a really interesting bit because, yeah, at the time when you first saw it, you think, oh, there it is. Yeah. And then she stabs it, and then you realize, yeah, it is a pipe that's a domed in a in a yeah. curves sort of way which looks like the dome of the young's head you, of course when you get the dvd you wind back and you play it and it's clearly a version of the alien that she sees the first time so it does read as the alien yeah yeah and then she stabs it and it's clearly a pipe so but you can get around that by saying that you're seeing what she sees yes, and yes. She's the, it's it's what she sees she's the alien but um yeah that was like ah oh, cool and then at one point it does drop down. Then it does attack. It comes down from above again. She sees it above. Yeah. It drops yeah. down. Then a hat cuts to her with Dylan. So she somehow survived it. And the first yeah. words out of her yeah. mouth. Yeah. She knows. She says, it knows. It can figure out. That's why it didn't kill me before. Yeah. It won't kill me now. It could smell it on me. I mean, dogs could smell cancer on you. Uh, that's a scientific fact. So that's very believable. Yeah. Yeah. That, you know, I, yeah that's like, I, I, I go along with that. Yeah, but do you think if the alien is that clever, it would have immobilized her to stop her from doing what she wants to do with Dylan, which is kill herself? So if the alien is that smart, wouldn't have just grabbed her and just tied her up but, with the. But, but no, no, I disagree with that because why? She just thinks it's going to burst out of her anyway. So why try? But she kills herself. That effectively stops her from incubating, so it does. Yeah, how does he know it's going to kill? Her? How does he know she will kill herself? Because that's a, that's a, he, if, it, if it takes the instinctive turn of like, I won't damage you, yeah, I'm not going to harm yeah. you, therefore why does it take us to the next level? I'm going to protect you, which is what a mother does, right? But this isn't a so, mother, it's just a drone. But, that's, but isn't it, that's what it, isn't it, it, that isn't it programmed into its DNA to protect the queen at all costs? So therefore instinctively it would just go, let's just immobilize her and, I'll sit, and literally stand in front of him and be a guard dog until she bursts out. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know about that. That's why they. That's why they did the hard cut. We didn't have that conversation between the the alien and Ripley. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, that's what I'm saying. You need that. Uh, I, I think. I think. Really I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it, it, yeah. I don't know. Weird. Yeah. But okay. yeah. Basically, she says you got to kill. You. She says, Dylan, I can't kill myself. Yeah. She's not programmed to destruct like Arnie, the Terminator. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and he says, Dylan, you got to do it. And he's and he's literally going to cut her head off with an axe, which is a hell of a way to go. Yeah, there's an infirmary, isn't there? A heap of drugs that she could take. I don't know. Yeah, no, yeah, that's right. But, yeah. uh, but he doesn't go through with it, and he no. said, like, if uh, it basically, um, if it won't kill you, that might be to our advantage. So he yeah. says, when the time, when the creature's dead, I'll, I will, I will carry it through. I'll, I will kill you. Um. Then the group basically, they, this is the climax, especially. Now they kind of try and play out their plan and lure the, uh, the Xenomorph uh, through to its death, um, using themselves as bait. There's lots of scenes of them rushing down corridors and 
shutting entrances and it's confusing it, as hell. Yeah. yeah, it is. It is. I get kind of lost. I may have cut. I may have jumped massively ahead. But anyway, I'm just going to talk about this bit because um, yeah. I think there's a whole load of bits that happens before all that happens. But anyway, um, so they're basically kind of trying to lure it through this kind of maze-like thing. We get lots of POV shots from the xenomorph through this too as it's been which is supposed to be pretty innovative at the time yeah i think they're using a steady cam that could that could circle around and spin around and yeah yeah um and a few things go wrong uh so i'm gonna get kind of picked off as it doesn't quite work we also get these shot of the company ship that's kind of getting closer to the planet as well whilst yeah uh i think and uh not andrew's uh I've forgotten his name now. 85 is he's not runs up making part yeah. in this at all. He's just waiting for the ship to arrive. Yeah, he runs up to meet them. Yeah. And um does at one point Morse um hits he runs into another guy and they, they knock each other over. Yeah. And they laugh. Right. Yeah. And so you scared me. And then that one of them gets take picked off from above, I think. Yeah. Um yeah, that's yeah. right. So they're running. Yeah, and then uh, so there's yeah, so lots of stuff keeps happening. Like we get that uh, Phil Davis gets killed as well at this point too. I think as well, uh, another character dies and oh yeah, oh yeah, so the, the Eric character panics. So they get it. They think they're kind of luring it into because there's a dead body in in the actual bit where they want it to be, and they yeah. want to be able to use that to lure it in. But then just as the animal pokes his head in. I think the character's called Eric and he panics and he hits the pe- the piston and then there's an yes. runs off. Um, and you can't stop the piston once it starts. No, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Um, and then the company arrive at this point mm-hmm. and Aaron receives them and one man basically asks about Ripley and Aaron says that she's in the furnace at the moment and there's this dude, Asian dude, isn't it, with um, some... Well, yeah, now that you tell me that he's directed my time videos, it suddenly strikes me that these Asian scientists dude look like the dudes in Nothing Really Matters, the Madonna video clip. <laughs> so, <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, anyway. Um, um, yeah, so we're then, um, and they there's a guy, there's a group of people with a steel cage behind them too. Um, yeah. Which kind of is supposedly to capture the, capture the isomorph but yeah you can go uh they have it yeah you can tell that they're they to, to basically for the for the alien yeah um then we get morse come back to morse again and he's running through the tunnel he this is the bit where he bumps into the gregor character that you were talking about yeah. they kind of joke about scaring each other <laughs> yeah and yeah then, you then, yeah, alien, <laughs> then uh xenomorph pops up and goes <laughs> um <laughs> it's kind of joined into <laughs> yeah. yeah and he kills yeah. him. Uh, and then yeah. does the whole kind of crawling away bit. Uh, and then Ripley enters the tunnel and she tries to get Morse away. And she's with Dylan and Dylan, uh, because Dylan's there and the alien kind of finally gets lured into the piston because he sees Dylan as, you know, as meat. Uh, and he does, yeah. the Ripley is that. Um, so they're trying to. But look. he grabs, he grabs her, effectively threatening her. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Which is why it stalks. Which again makes me think. Well, instinctively he knows that she's important. So yeah, yeah, that's yeah, right. Interesting. Mm. Um, so they manage to lure him into the piston, and uh, the Morse character closes the door. So they're basically effectively in the piston, um, and they try to climb up. And the xenomorph notices they're doing that. Well, oh, that's a good idea. I'll climb up too. So, yeah, <laughs> that's right. <what>, yeah. <laughs> Huh, that's easy. Uh, at which point Dylan realizes what's going on and he says, like, I've got to contain it here. And yeah. pissed off because she needs him to kill her. Um, yeah. And then she climbs up to safety um, and basically the xenomorph attacks Dylan. And we get this. I hate this bit. I actually really hate Dylan's death bit because he's just going, yeah. come on, motherfucker, give me what you got. Is that all you got? And you're just like, that's, mm. that's just crap. Like, yeah. <laughs> like the, the xenomorph would just fuck you over. You wouldn't even hear him talk. He's yeah, like, yeah. Hard a bastard. Come on. <laughs> so, uh, so that's. It's just I weird think. when he goes, "I'm here, kill me. I'm here, yeah. kill me. Do it. Do it. Kill yeah. me. Do it now. You piece of that's shit." Weird when he did that. Yeah, he did. <laughs> and then this big log comes down and splats it. Uh, mm. Oh, well, <laughs> um, okay. So. 
Uh, yeah, so that's happening. And while that's done that, um, uh, basically they uh, who, uh, they dump the... Morse is the one, isn't he, that dumps the, the shit on him. Shit on yeah. him. Yeah, Morse is, yeah, he climbs up and he's only alive enough to work it. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, and buries him. Um, they think it's all done. Yep. And then all of a sudden the uh, xenomorph comes jumping out and starts climbing up the chain. Covered in molten lead. Covered in molten lead. And then Morse, he's a smart cookie. He says, cover it in water. Uh, yeah. yeah. And uh, so then that's the bit where Ripley jumps out and pulls the chain, which unleashes the cold water. And then basically with the cold and the heat. Uh, Cracks it. Cracks open and explodes. The xenomorph is gone. Um, Ripley then climbs up to uh, the platform that Morse is on. And uh, at this point, she sees Aaron and the rest of the company there. And the man with the sunglasses moves to the forward. And all of a sudden, there's a guy there who looks a bit like Bishop. Yes. And it's Lance Erickson. And he basically is talking to her like this. Ripley. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Ripley. Yeah, it's okay, Ripley. Your bishop loves my son. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So, so it comes across that he is the one who created Bishop. Yeah, that's that's, that's that's what is implied. Yeah, and he's not yeah. an android. That he's a human. He's the human designer. He's sent there from the company to ensure that Ripley's safe return. He tells uh, the um, the medic team are there. They're going to remove the embryo safely and uh, save her life. Yeah. And Did you say they're going to kill it or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it's very right. important to us. And Ripley, kill it, which is, you just know that's bullshit. Yeah, it's bullshit, man. Ripley basically asks him what they intend to do with the embryo once it's removed. And he says, oh, we will destroy it. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Um, and we can't allow it to live. Are you crazy? Yeah. And then um, she just kind of knows not to trust him. Um, yes. And she kind of gives it some thought. And then she's like, <coughs> excuse me. Um, and she realizes that he's, if he's with the company, she can't trust him. She closes the fence, uh, separating the two of them. And um, Morse then moves the platform away. And uh, she says something like, fuck you. Um, and uh, one of the other soldiers immediately starts to uh, shoot Morse in the leg. Um, yes. And in response, Aaron kind of comes out and he twats Bishop around the face with a lead pipe. And oh my yeah. God, his ears hang his ear off. He's an android, you muppet. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, is that what it was? I yeah. thought it was. He was just—he was just a really hard dude. Because it's no, red. No, no, he's—he's he's another android. Uh, so oh, because I thought the blood was red. Oh, really? Not white. Oh, maybe I'm wrong. Ah, uh, uh, question. He's, he's just a hard dude. He just has a fucking ear hanging off. But I, I just thought it was red. I thought okay. it was red. Well, that's interesting. If he is, I got. Uh, yeah. I'm happy to be corrected. Um, yeah. It's uh, and he's like going. It's a magnificent specimen. You must let me have it. Yes. And, uh, then Ripley yeah. comes out to the furnace. Uh, he moves. Yeah. So they kind of op- the platform they're on hovers over the boiling hot furnace. Um, and she walks to the edge, sums up uh, the last bit of strength inside her, and basically kind of plows backwards. Just at that point, the queen point. alien comes out comes out of her and she's like, no, fuck you, holds it in um, as that goes into the furnace and they're completely uh, obliterated and killed. Um, The interesting thing I found about this is that the two two remaining dudes is Morse and 85 and they don't particularly like her. No. But they all, in that moment, they all unify and straight away know that she's right and and like Morse does what she tells him, brings her away. He doesn't trust him either. Yeah. No, by complying, that could have been his escape route out of there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and 85 too attacks the guy that's supposed to save him. Like he knows by doing, it, he's gonna die. Oh yeah, so we missed that. He gets shot and killed. So 85. You got to kill him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. So the fact that the three of them, the two, the three of them unite in this moment, and those two in particular agree with her that they see what the scene can do. Yeah. And they're criminals, but they automatically think the right thing, which is the amount of innocent people who die if the scene gets weaponized. Not right. I think that's kind of a nice moment. Yeah, yeah. That's true. They all, they it's a good synergy. At the end. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, and then we get the... The other thing uh, that got me was when yeah. they shot, they shot more to the leg, they used the same pulse rifles in Aliens, oh. but it sounded sounded wrong. Uh, 
it's a different it's a different gun sound. Whereas the pulse rifles were like a really high pitched. They go bang on. That's not the right sound. That's not right. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Had a problem with that. Sure. Fair enough. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so yeah. So then we get the uh, basically the company leave with uh, mortal kind of bounces up, um, and. Uh, we then get the final transmission of Ripley when she was on the Nostromo. The uh, first film, yeah. Yeah, this is Ripley signing, last signing off. Driver of Nostromo signing off. And the final company message screen shows that the uh, Fury 161 colony needs to be closed and its equipment sold as scrap. Bullshit! Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's it. That's the end of the film. <laughs> um, yeah, and you're left with the whole feeling of like, Ah, uh, okay. Uh, all right. Yeah. There's a, weird, the, yeah. there's a weird shot where the, yeah, the furnaces all died, aren't they? Because they switch everything off. It's all very weird. Yeah. But yeah. So more survives. More Ripley dies. And you, don't, and you don't feel anything about her death. You don't, it doesn't feel like, a, oh, my God, no. That's, yeah. It's weird. Do you think, sticking to this particular plot line, that mm. it was inevitable that Ripley had to take her own life. Yeah, well, I know I knew for a fact beforehand leading in it, that she had enough. She wanted to out. Yeah, yeah. And the only way they could entice her back in was they promised to kill her. A bit like Harrison Ford and yeah. Return of the Jedi, or whichever one it was. It's Force Awakens. <laughs> Force Awakens. <laughs> um, so it was a bit like that, because yeah. um, she has a producer credit on this, right? So she had a yeah, credit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. So, but again, it just, it just felt hot. Let me put it this way. I saw Bad Boys for Life. Thanks to you. Um, and there's a spoiler alert. There's a moment where a major character from this franchise gets killed out of nowhere. What? It's a, big, it's a big gasp sort of moment because the way it's handled is like, <gasps> and the thing is, this franchise is three films. It's not fucking any, it's not, nobody's written any sort of fan fiction. There's no canon. There's no comic books written about it. But yeah. I've known that this character has been with this film franchise from the very beginning, which is 97 when it was. Yeah, yeah. Um, and when he dies, it's like, shit. Um, because the emotional, they worked hard to, to, the one thing this film did quite well was talk about the emotional bonds of the, of the two lead characters and how they've gotten older and how things have changed and how that's changed their relationship with each other. Yeah, yeah. That all works. It works for what is a Michael Bay-esque action film. So, again, it's that thing of, like, it had an emotional resonance. I remember people gasping when Admiral Akbar died in, in <laughs> Return of the Jedi. Um um, but yeah, this one when Ripley dies, I really I'm so filled with disappointment at this point. I don't. Care. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I would I would love to have been a fly on the wall in your uh, post discussion chat with your fellow mm. uh, film uh, wankers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> about that because well, because uh, it's hard at the time. Like I guess I don't have a memory of associating it with. The previous two um i mean like uh, i don't want to speak of your age but you are you're a little bit older than i am so you, you <laughs> you're coming at things from a naturally from a bit of a different angle than i would so as in like you would really remember and you do really remember mm-hmm. aliens where i was only six or seven when that came out right so yeah um so from that point of view was it a bit of a Phantom Menace moment for you? Uh, if we kind of use the same uh, Star Wars analogy, like, was it a case of going in and going, "What?" Um, yeah. Like it was how, just. It was just. What yeah. was what, what? What was the key kind of points that you guys were discussing? Do you remember? Uh, that was. It was just how how, how disappointing it was, and how. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, it suffered from um, the the longer they left it the more it was going to suffer from hype and expectation. Um, it's tough following the act of two great films. And so I don't think, with the little classic film critics, we didn't know what we want, but we knew we didn't want that. Yeah. Um, um, and for me, yeah, I was like, yeah, it just, it didn't have the, just didn't have a wow factor full up. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was still like quite in my early 20s when I saw, saw it. So if you'd pitched to me the idea of an alien predator crossover, I would have gone, yeah, that's fucking brilliant. Do that. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Uh, yeah. It was, it was, 
I know, I'm, not, I'm just, yeah. I, I guess my reaction though with the Alien Predator thing is that, that I'm not a fan of the crossover. So, like, yeah, um, I, I, that doesn't wow me in any sense. Um, oh, completely. No, they, they, they fucked that um, up. Yeah. Yeah. But, like, I, I, and like I said, I, I kind of applaud the fact that they were trying to do something different with it. But I think the problem is, is, is it, to go back to our, uh, you know, our rule of like, it has to be in the vein of the original, which is where they yes. went to go. Yes. By adding, by adding something a little bit different that makes it unique and makes the film that stands on its own right. Okay. Mm. So, but the last two points, it, it doesn't meet because you, you can't watch the film in its own right without knowing the backstory of what took place before. Um, and what it tries to offer doesn't new doesn't work either. Um, so yeah, like it's, it's 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 one of those tricky ones. But like I remember, like, and I I guess we're gonna discuss this a little bit now. But when I finished watching this recently, I texted you and said, you know, I just watched this. It's not that bad. Um, yeah, yeah, you did. Yeah. And you went uh, <laughs> yeah. Everything. I literally, I literally, I literally went to the fridge. <laughs> got a carton of milk, put the milk in the glass jar, get the jar, and then psh, like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, one of those moments. Um, and all I meant by that comment was, I think I went, in, I think my memory of it was that it was shit, right? Yeah. And I think I went back in going, it's not as shit as I thought it was. I think that's what I was yeah. meant by it, right? Because yeah. there are pockets of it that intrigue me. It would have been interesting to have a more mature Fincher handle it. Yes, uh, yeah. And add that spin on it because I think it'll be interesting to examine if the whole point of it was to examine the human psyche against yeah. a hybrid kind of uh, xenomorph creature. That would have been more of an interesting angle to go down. It would have needed to be a lot deeper than it was. It would have needed yes. to have a far more longer screen time. And but then then again that may have worn people off it anyway because of the very fact that what aliens did as pushing it into more action territory they would have wanted more action whereas it wouldn't have been it definitely wouldn't have been that it was yeah. a very slow beast indeed and it would have been a, yeah very I don't know is it, it I think it could have been good but it could easily have been really bad, even worse if that makes sense so yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, yeah so and and the other thing to raise is obviously like since um you know we've had obviously had alien resurrection well let's just put a pin in that for now jump ahead to yeah. the fact that um uh ridley scott has created uh two prequels in prometheus and alien covenant the latter of which was a massive f- box office failure which yes. is put the um, kibosh on any plans that he had on doing the third one that he was going to do to bring it full circle. Also, the fact that Fox has now been bought out by Disney puts the whole new spin on things, right? But you yeah. know, it has made led people to reopen up the conversation about uh, Neil Blomkamp's uh, thing that he leaked a few years back now with uh, trying yes. to disband three onwards. Um, mm. and just pick up from two, two. And, and all the it's, artwork uh, stuff that he kind of put out there and there was a point yeah. where it really was going to it seemed like it was going to pick up but then Ridley Scott came in and said no I've got other plans they're, they're basically going down this avenue of, of potentially like the franchise at the moment they don't know where they're going with it people keep oscillating or, or gravitating I should say not oscillating towards um towards this idea that Blomkamp had because it kind of picks up from where everyone in their heart of hearts left left their heart <laughs> you know that's the heart of, yeah. of the franchise was at, at the back of of two so before we kind of bow out like where where would you in out of interest where would you have taken the franchise picking up yeah from? I guess that's the big question is how would you make it better uh where would you have done it I'd, possibly the, the misdirect being um and this feels a bit episodic TV is that you have a new group of people encountering it and you don't bring Ripley into it until like halfway through or the end of the first act, maybe. Yeah. Um, is another way to go. Well, I kind of, yeah, I get that the chi is the franchise. So why would you do that? But, um, 
you could go the repercussions, like she comes she comes back and then she has to deal with repercussions of that, of, of what she had done and, and, and so on and so forth. Um, um, you could get, do you get, I mean, I guess Prometheus and all that tried to explore the mythology of the creatures and tried to make them all about the spaceship, the original, the original horseshoe spaceship, mm. and, and, and find out this alien race. Um, and I guess that's another big deal too, is that within this universe, it's established that they haven't come into contact with any other alien race that's sentient or yes. intelligent. And that would be kind of a big deal, I guess, if there is an actual alien race out there, which according to Ridley Scott, created the human race anyway. Yes. Um, um, my first thought, again, I, I, haven't, I, you know, I haven't given it that much thought, but I guess when I, when I, when I was first entertaining the thought of a predator-alien crossover, how would you have done that right? Uh, the tricky thing is that Predator has been around, those, that race has been around for hundreds of years as far as humanity is concerned in this timeline because they were first on Earth back in the 18th century. So how is it that humanity's got spaceships flying out in the space and establishing colonies and not run into these guys yet is, is a tricky one. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. It, it is... It is yeah, where where do you take it? Do you do you explore the mythology of the alien a bit more and try and make them intelligent and communicate with them somehow, and do a story about that, um, and find out more about? I mean, I guess Prometheus is all about that in terms of their creators and why they were created and so on and so forth. Um, but yeah, it's tricky because for me, the the star of Alien has always been the aliens. Ripley was kind of in condens- not really. I mean, Sigourney Weaver was great. The character of Ripley is great. But if you'd presented me a third movie with aliens, but not not Ripley, I probably would not have minded that if the replacement of Ripley, whoever that is, or Peoples, are awesome. Yeah. Cool. Right, so it wouldn't have devastated me not to have Ripley in it so much because I was more about the aliens, I guess. So. So yeah. Is that but is that where um, Prometheus and Covenant have? fallen over though because that they essentially are doing that they if you ignore the fact that they're going like pre xenomorph but they're not yeah. they're presenting that universe without ripley but they're not yeah. offering any characters that have any substance yeah the problem is that the, the replacement ripley whoever that is are good enough yeah they're not, they're not they're not cool enough they're not smart enough they don't they do dumb things which is I blame Ridley Scott more because in both movies they do dumb things, especially Prometheus. Like, yeah, yeah. There's yeah. yeah. some idiotic things in that film. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, yeah, like I said, I'm just being a typical critic douchebag. I, I know what I don't like, and I, but I'm not willing to offer any... Like, I don't really like, like if, if you entertain the idea of, like, the Predator kind of component to it, what, what if we watch the film and we are unaware that it has a predator component to it until like midway through i.e yeah, yeah. um you still have the ripley component and you're picking up from that and you're dealing yeah. with the battle of the xenomorph and then all of a sudden the predators enter the scene and it become and then you just flip it right on its head and it becomes a whole new beast that what is that, cool. that interest you or or is yeah. that wanky no i mean um, in the sense that, uh, yeah, it can be, if it's done right, it can be kind of cool. If there's something out there that's killing these things, I don't know what it is. The trick is, as an audience member, you could probably figure it out because you, and in terms of publicity, you, you would, you would say, uh, it's a bit like the Arnie, Arnie's a good guy in Terminator 2. They, they, they killed that misdirect in the promotion. So that changed how Cameron promoted, told that story up to that point. Um, so, but it's an interesting idea that if there's, it's say they're in a colony and, and this, these aliens are killing these people. Say there's a base, some sort of fucking scientific base on a planet somewhere and these aliens are starting to kill these humans and they're fucked and the last minute something starts killing these aliens and they're going, what the hell is that? And they realise it's a predator and then they kind of realise that, that maybe it's a worse thing than, I don't know, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Back okay. in the 90s, it was a really intriguing idea until we got the, the thing is we're talking about it with so much baggage from the Alien Predator crossovers, and those films are so bad. Yeah, so many yeah, yeah. So it's kind of hard right. not to talk about that, that sort of baggage attached. Sure. So, all right. So let's let's look at it. Uh, last two questions for you, and before we we yeah. kind of conclude, um, what is it about Alien Three that makes it so bad? Uh, this, the, the the characters don't give a shit. 
whinging, whinging palms, as you put it. <laughs> um, no investment. They all die. I don't care. I don't know. I still lose track of who they are. Um, the the environment's very depressing as well, even though it's a beautiful environment. Um, the direction is very video clip. It's very fast paced. I don't like that. Aliens, Alien in particular, breathes really well. Uh, Aliens goes along with a nice, tidy pace, but there's, yeah, it, it doesn't it doesn't do that. And this is the hardest thing about a sequel. It doesn't expand on the mythology that gives us something different, but at the same time feels like it's it sits well within that universe. Yeah. Um, um, it it yeah because Aliens expanded on what the alien was. Which was it, yeah, it showed yeah. us how it bred. It showed us how thing, yeah. Which I guess mm-hmm. technically Prometheus and Common does that by taking it to its own world, but it just wasn't told right. So mm-hmm. maybe it's that. Maybe it is. Maybe the kernel, of the idea that that um, Scott had was the right way to go. I mean, the engineers and the fact that they created humans is a bit wanky, um, and I probably would have avoided that to be honest. Uh, but. Yeah, maybe it is going to the home world, or the, or the world of the the, the 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 jockey, going to his world and finding yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was all about. Maybe that would have been a way to go. But mm. yeah, it just it just it was a nineties film. It was cut very quickly. The, there's no payoff. There's no invasion, emotional investment. The, the alien's not that scary because all the tricks it was doing to scare people, but the atmosphere that Cameron sets up in Aliens is beautiful. Walking into that room and you see those face huggers in those tubes. Yeah. for the first time and you're just shitting yourself and the fact that Paul Weiser puts his face very close to one and it goes Voomp. like it yeah, just yeah, yeah, yeah. that's for me, that's where it falls over yeah me. okay cool all right so my last question to you like um so we uh, there's been six films if you don't include the crossovers with the predator there's been six films in the franchise so far yeah um four of which arguably you could say or the last four, arguably, you could say, were massive mishits. Yeah. So what is it? And yet we are still talking about the franchise. There's oh, yeah. excitement there. So what is it that is drawing us to it, and why do we still want to go back to it? The first two films are all-time greats, and you want to capture that magic again. Uh, maybe maybe there is nothing, there's nothing left to say about the, the, the Xenomorph, the alien. It does what it does. We know what it can do. Um, and there's nothing more interesting than that because they are animals to some extent. That, that's, it's a bit like Jaws 4. Yeah. We're running out of things that are interesting about them, so maybe that's it. But, which is, again, why the idea of Prometheus seemed to make sense in the sense that you go back to the planet and the people who made them and why they made them and all that sort of thing. Um, but that's, yeah, it's, that arguably is delving really into hardcore science fiction. Whereas the beauty of Alien and Aliens is that it's a horror film, not not about not not pure sci-fi per se. It's yeah. a sci-fi setting, but the greatness comes in the tension of what this thing does as it hunts you down and what it does to you. Mm. So but I think it's that it's just lightning in the bottle, and you just want to feel that again. Yeah, yeah. Like, if you can capture it again in these great films, who have fantastic execution, fantastic. Yeah. So, let's do it. so so do you think it can be called again? Do you think that there is potential still there or, or have we just, uh, with the whole kind of, as I said, the buying out of Fox and stuff, have we seen the last of the Xenomorphs? I'd say we have seen the last of the Xenomorphs until some really genius filmmaker comes up with an idea that makes you go, oh, my God, that's so obvious in hindsight. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think so. So, yeah, I mean, look, at you think, I mean, say in your logic, right? Okay. Yeah. Six films, four duds, two are great. Nine films, two are great, seven are duds. What am I talking about? Star Wars, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they are, yeah, they are duds. I mean, from Return of the Jedi onwards, they're, they're pretty shit. They really are. Um, sorry for the people who are fans of the last three films, which are so fucking wrapped up in controversy. Mm. I don't know whether people like them or don't like them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like Star Wars, Lightning in the Bottle, Empire Strikes Back, in hindsight, because when Empire came back out as a kid, I'm like, ah, uh, in hindsight, it is a fucking well-made film. Yeah. And it, it brings so much more. It enriches that universe so much more. Um, but yeah, so but people, it's not stopping people from oh, yeah. making months because guess what? What comes on? The Mandalorian, and that's a genius piece yeah, of fun yeah, yeah. the universe. So keep trying. Yeah, maybe so, something. So it, by, by that rationale, is there room for the Xenomorphs to thrive on the small screen? 
possibly. Maybe that's the way to do it. Because here's the thing, right? Maybe it is a case of like, let's get some characters, let's get some time to involve human characters, get you invested in them, get you invested in the universe that they sit in, and then fucking throw a bunch of aliens at them and then see what happens. Maybe, maybe it's that simple. Maybe, maybe it's the old TV drama way of getting you really invested in the people who are going to get killed off one by one or whatever by these things. So maybe that's it. Maybe that maybe it is. Maybe that's a way to go. Because let's face it, the last bit, the best storytelling on this, on on video audio storytelling has come from the small screen in the last fifteen years, right? Ten. So maybe that's the way to do it. Would it be too much to fuck it up? if they threw in a time travel component into it? Uh, I, 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 my instinct would be against that because I hated the fact that the aliens were on the Earth on the Earth in the 20th century to do the alien predator crossover. And I hated that Wade and Yutani were aware of them by the late 20th century, early 21st century. I, 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 I preferred the idea that was originally sold to me was that their first time they were kind of aware of it was during the first alien film. So um, in terms of time travel, what do you, what do you, what are you thinking there? Oh, I'm just meaning like, you know, so they, if you're picking up, say, say alien three is part of the canon, right? So then they go, yeah. right. Okay. All right. We have no known uh, way of getting any of this DNA other than to go back to where we know it existed to begin with, but we need to get there before before it's discovered by the Nostromo team. Right. Yeah. I don't know, man. I'm just spitballing. Yeah, spitballing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It feels like time travel as a technological achievement seems to be a bit of a leap from the, the technology that's available in this particular universe Yeah. to me. Um but again, if you if you take the engineers as canon, then who knows what they can fucking do? Yeah, yeah, cool, man. Yeah, maybe. All right. It's interesting. It is an interesting hypothesis. I must admit, like of all the franchises I'm super invested in, Aliens is one of them. But I'm not as invested as I am in some others. So probably yeah. as much. So that's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, I guess that's the thing. It, it seems to there still feels like there's life there. Yeah. It's just a question of how that's gonna come to fruition or, or, or to be developed. I mean, that's to be said and done. Mm. Hmm. Okay. All right. I think that's a good kind of way to bow out on our podcast discussions. Um, if you've joined us, this is the third time we've entered into the world of alien franchise. You can check out our previous podcast discussions. If you hit up our old um, iTunes account and look back to when we discussed the first film and aliens and we've just concluded our discussions on alien three for good or ill what were your thoughts of this particular film maybe you did like it maybe you liked the tone that fincher was going for and you want to argue the point that uh, it deserves more cred than it actually received let us know until then i'm your host for the podcast series of surgeons of horror my name is Saul Muerte, and joining me as always when we talk about these sci-fi horror kind of big gems um and that was uh, anthony the big gg thank you see you bye goodbye you're listening to the Surgeons of Horror podcast. Music supplied by Peter Nezik. For more discussions or podcasts, head over to surgeonsofhorror.com or head over to our Facebook and Twitter sites for the latest news and updates.